Where are we? El Nido. Halfway around the world. It's insane. I'd say this is one of our top 10. Be from all the beautiful kite spots, the epic beaches, the beautiful crystal clear water. One of my favorite places that we've ever been to. I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Oh, the Marlin. The Marlin. Yeah. Twenty countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. It's another beautiful day in the Philippines. It seems to be always beautiful here. And we're just heading out. It's like goodbye El Nido, goodbye all the beautiful islands in Baku Bay and this area of Taiwan. Goodbye. It's It's been way too quick. We've been here hardly like any time at all and we're already heading out. And we have my mom down, she's left now and now we're heading out. But it's been two weeks of like vacation in a beautiful, beautiful area. working away but uh, I've been uh, having some epic snorkel, snorkel sessions with my mom and it's been just fantastic can't recommend visiting this place enough what do you think Ben so we were here seven years ago and it's changed a lot in seven years I mean there's roads where there weren't roads hotels where there was nothing power there's power <laughs> we were here actually at New Year's seven years ago and it was crazy like they were throwing fireworks everywhere and I think they're actually lighting up dynamite it seemed like it was crazy but uh, now it's pretty civilized it's not a bad spot I mean, lots of little hipster restaurants I can get through my lobster I had in my house for a knife and I got this I think it's a weapon but it's a very nice knife I think it's definitely worth a visit. I'd say this is one of our top 10 for sure places that we visited all around, just the Philippines in general. Sadly, we're just gonna have to come back to the beautiful Philippines because we're missing out on a huge chunk of beauty in this area. And we know it, and we haven't done the Philippines justice, but where we have been everywhere has been just a freaking blast. Be from all the beautiful kite spots, the epic beaches, the beautiful crystal clear water. I haven't seen this water this clear since the two motus. Uh, it, it has it all here and one of my favorite places that we've ever been to. And as usual, I'm super sad to be leaving and heading out of here. So what's happening now, Ben? Mother-in-law is gone and it's time for us to leave. We're, we're uh, just gonna get some diesel, some gas and head off back out the east side of the Philippines. It's gonna take us like five days to motor there, so. But hey, gas, we gotta get rid of some old oil. But yeah, like El Nido is done, complete, check, it's over. over a thousand pesos for one drug of diesel which means it's about 40 bucks for five gallons. Yeah, can you go down? I don't know, can you? There's a tree, you know? Well, I can get out. Maybe. Sammy. Uh, just a normal day. 
for boat work, getting fuel. What do you want to say? That's a lot of work. Have we, you? we got a lot of motoring to do the next week to get back to Cebu. And then uh, we're gonna fuel up again before we head south. I'm gonna burn the diesel. Holy smokes, there are some gorgeous resorts here in El Nido. Some of these islands, they must be private islands. I'm afraid to even try and go to shore. They'll probably like chase us away with, with guns or something. But they are gorgeous. Gorgeous beaches, gorgeous accommodations. I could stay there. I could use a vacation from the boat. <gasps> Just kidding. It is absolutely incredible how calm it is. Uh, we're making five knots of breeze. And that's exactly, I think, how much wind I feel. <laughs> what time has it been? It's not even seven o'clock and I'm starting to sweat. It's only 29.9 degrees. Um, usually gets around 32 in the morning. But I've been sleeping outside on the trampoline and then I move around to the cockpit and then eventually at like 4 a.m. I'll come to bed because it's finally cooled off. Other little fact, when you drink coffee in the tropics, you start to sweat. It's really weird. Like it really affects you. So I'm gonna have a little sweat fest here because I need my coffee. <laughs> There'll be no kiting today. This spot right here, what used to be called 250K, 250K Kite Resort. It looks pretty awesome. Like you could anchor your boat here and then you can kite off there. Got a little sand spit coming out where you can launch. It's just there's no wind today. So we can't really show you exactly how to kite here. We're gonna go further up the coastline and check out a couple more spots. Um, we might even go as far to Coron. But yeah, check this place out. It looks pretty cool. Looks nice. Maybe not as nice as the last place we kited out. Oh, this paradise isn't quite as... It's not quite as paradisical as the last paradisical place. I have to say, like, the Philippines spoils you for paradise. Like, it's, it's absolutely stunning here. Stunning in an incredible way. We've seen so many outrageous awesome kite spots as we've traveled through here and we've kited at some of the most amazing places i think we've ever kited at this this is probably the best kiting and the best kite spots we found in the world to date now we haven't been all over the world but philippines has a lot going for it season's over this place is just it's just nuts i don't think i've seen the ocean this calm in, in a long time it's crystal clear blue water it's hot as heck, and it's just gorgeous. As I see little bits of styrofoam float blow by, I always am wondering if there's a fish trap attached to that. It's incredible. It is absolutely incredible how calm it is here, and this is part of the reason we're starting to head out of here. Change in season. So what happens in the Philippines, there's a monsoon season. It blows northeast, from the northeast, and it's like super windy. And then, right now, in May, it starts to switch, and the wind's gonna switch from the complete opposite direction, southwest. And actually, right now, between the seasons, this one is the hottest. It's stinking hot in the sunshine, man. Stinking hot. I wonder what this is. One day of rain in probably a month and a half. That's really not a lot of rain. It's, and uh, the change of seasons will be bring the rain. I think we'll get out of here. I much prefer sailing, but it's still gorgeous to motor when it's in this calm of conditions. I mean, it's incredible. So we just pulled into this gorgeous spot here in Caron and uh, just gonna go check out some lagoons. It's sort of a day stop for us, but it's a bit epic to anchor. It's really, really deep here. And we're doing a stern tie. We don't do them very often. And uh, Ben's just on shore, just tying us up. How's it going? So I, I dumped the anchor out front. Uh, we're about two to, just over two to one scope maybe three to one and then we're tying off to shore and it's gonna hold us tight. This is a fantastic way to anchor in deep anchorages and in tight anchorages. So we're pretty stoked uh, to be able to do this here. And it's freaking gorgeous when you get to stern tights, get real close to the rocks. It's a massive drop off. So it probably goes from like a meter where Ben is down to like 20 meters right under the boat. And we're gonna take a day stop here to go check out all of the really cool lagoons that are in this area. I think 
I think life jackets are mandatory. So they're walking one banquet over the next banquet into the walkway. <laughs> We're gonna go to the front, which I'm assuming is somewhere up here. They wanted us to bring our own life jacket, <laughs> and which we don't have. We never use a life jacket. Anyways, we had to rent life jackets. They were so sweet. They they let us rent the life jackets for free, and we only paid three hundred each to get in here. Now put your life jacket on, Ashley. Put it on. <laughs> the most efficient way to wear it is as a diaper. It floats to you the best. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Orange looks really good on you, Ash. <laughs> Thanks, man. I have a lot of orange. Jeez, Ben, that diaper looks really good on you. Thanks, man. It is absolutely idyllic in there. Just so peaceful. Well, I think we got parked on top of. We gotta get out of here. We're actually heading, making our way out to Cebu now. And from Cebu, we're gonna head to Indonesia. So we're back to our, our original plan. I put on deodorant. I have natural deodorant. It's kind of uh, slimy in the heat. You know how all those natural deodorant bars are like so awesome at home and it's like cool out and you put them on, it's fine. Here, they kind of melt. I did not know this is what a cashew looked like. And they're just hanging out on the side of the road. Off a tree. We had a massive bee attack, like five days ago. Five days ago. And I'm still finding bees. It's like they swarmed our boat, and I think that meant we had to not live on Nahua because they were taken over. I believe in those 